there's four credit card companies that Apple Card could go to. It's either Chase, Amex, Capital One, or Synchrony Bank. Apple is looking for a new partner bank and their current partner, Goldman Sachs, regrets getting into bed with Apple because they've been losing billions of dollars ever since the Apple Card was launched. So I found the best credit card company for the Apple Card, and I'm sure it's not the one you were expecting. There's really seven criteria that Apple is likely thinking about when choosing their next banking partner. And the winner has a trait that Apple has been demanding from their iPhone hardware partners for over a decade now. Now the bank needs to be super stable and capable, especially if it's going to handle something as big as the Apple Car program. They've got to manage a ton of customers and handle all the financial stuff that comes with a huge partnership like this. Now, when we're talking about a bank that's got its financial act together, Chase Bank is the one that stands out. They're known for being really strong financially and can totally handle big credit card programs with loads of customers. First off, Chase isn't just any bank, it's the biggest in the US and has some pretty impressive financial ratings. Agencies like Standard & Poor's gave them an A plus rating. These ratings are like a stamp of approval for how well they're doing financially with solid performance, good quality assets, and a stable footing in the finance world. Now, here are some crazy numbers for you. Chase is the biggest commercial bank in the market, valued at a whopping $463 billion. They're also number one in purchase volume with $1.14 trillion, and they own close to 17% of the market share. That's huge. And Chase is also one of the big four banks in the US, which basically means they're really good at handling big operations. They offer all sorts of services from personal banking to credit cards, investments, and loans to a huge range of customers. Plus, they got plenty of branches and ATMs all over the place, which shows that they know how to handle the demands of a big customer base. And don't forget digital banking. That's key for managing large scale credit card programs. Chase has been putting a lot of resources into their online and mobile banking services, making it easier for people to manage their finances digitally. This is super important for a big program like the Apple Card, where a lot of people are gonna wanna use their phones to keep track of their spending and rewards. And it's important for Apple to partner with a bank that's not just reputable, but also really good at following the rules. This is super crucial because everyone's gonna be watching this partnership closely. Now, when it comes to a bank that's got a great rep in the credit card world, Chase also is the first name that comes to mind here too. They're basically the number one travel rewards program. People love creating their own Chase Trifecta lineup of cards. Their reputation screams premium, exclusive, and rewarding. And about a decade ago, Chase really doubled down on their compliance and risk control. We're talking billions of dollars spent here. This wasn't just throwing money around either. They invested in managing risk, sticking to the rules, and even boosting their legal safety net. And they seriously bulked up their team, focusing on risk and compliance. They gave their Global Financial Crimes Compliance Program a complete makeover, introduced tough anti-money laundering measures, and launched a Global Sanctions Compliance Program. Basically, they wanted to make sure they were playing by the rules and doing their part in the global fight against money laundering and terrorist financing. They also worked at getting better at customer due diligence and risk scoring. They even set up special committees to oversee how well they were following the regulatory orders. Chase really went the extra mile to make sure they were doing everything by the book. And that reminds me, Chase is one of my favorite standalone cashback credit cards. It's the Chase Freedom Unlimited card. I've had this card for over six years now with a $6,400 credit limit, and I just recommended it to my mom who wanted a nice 0% interest period for purchases and balance transfers. And the Freedom Unlimited has one of the longest 0% interest periods at 15 months now. Chase tends to pack their cards with a ton of intro bonus extras, and this card is no different. You get 200 bucks when you spend $500 in the first three months, and you could even hit that requirement at one store, I bet. If you're like me, that's gonna be two of your top three spending categories covered right there. Along with all of that, you earn 5% on travel purchase through Chase Ultimate Rewards, 3% on dining, 3% at drugstores, and probably the best of all, you're in a base rate of 1.5% elsewhere. Now, what that means is this card can become your one and done credit card setup since no matter the purchase category, you'll always be earning a respectable amount of cash back. That means you don't have to juggle cards. You can throw this in your wallet for everything. You even get three months of free premium service with DoorDash and Instacart. This is for those days that you're starving, but you don't feel like leaving the house. And you can supercharge these rewards when you pair this card with something like the Chase Sapphire Preferred card and transfer points 
over for double or triple the redemption value. So this car can really change and grow with you whenever you decide to start traveling more. So hit the link below to learn how to apply for the Chase Freedom Unlimited card and the Chase Sapphire Preferred card. So the new issuer needs to be comfortable with the risk profile of the Apple card. The Apple card lets anybody over a 600 credit score get approved, which is by definition a subprime credit score of between 580 to 620. Goldman Sachs faced billions of dollars worth of losses because it couldn't handle how risky their card holders were. Any bank they partner with needs to be comfortable managing higher risk borrowers. Now, this is where Capital One steps into the spotlight. These folks have really made a name for themselves in the subprime lending market, and guess what? They've stayed profitable even with the risks that come with the territory. Capital One is pretty much the go-to for a lot of people starting their credit journey. They've got these cards like the Saver One card or the Quicksilver card that are perfect for folks who are just getting their feet wet in the credit card world. They offer secured cards, student versions, and stripped down versions of their popular cash back cards. It's like they're holding your hand as you take your first steps into building credit, even when you might slip up a bit. And here's the thing, Capital One isn't just surviving in this risky lending game, they're actually thriving. Take their 2023 third quarter report, for example. They pulled in a net income of $1.8 billion. It's a pretty big deal because it shows they've got the skills to juggle the riskier side of lending and still make a profit. Now, by focusing on subprime consumers, a group that many traditional lenders might shy away from, Capital One has carved out their own niche. And Apple puts a big focus on innovation and having things just right. So they need to partner with a bank that's not just willing to play ball, but also be flexible enough to dance to Apple's tune. And you know what? Synchrony would be perfect for that job. These guys are like the chameleons of the banking world, especially when it comes to co-branded credit cards. They're not just good at it, they're sort of the masters at it. Synchrony has cornered the market in teaming up with all sorts of companies to create credit cards that fit each partner like a glove. Take their partnerships with big names like Amazon and Verizon, for example. They launched credit card programs with them that weren't just off-the-shelf solutions, but were tailored to what Amazon and Verizon specifically wanted. This really shows Synchrony's ability to lock in with different businesses, understanding and meeting their unique demands. And Synchrony literally has over 100 different co-branded card partnerships. That's a whole lot of experience dealing with different business types. So if Apple throws a curveball or has some special requests, chances are Synchrony has seen something similar before and knows exactly how to handle it. And it's crucial for the new bank to have experience offering credit products that are similar to what Apple already offers. This makes it way easier to switch to a new issuer without any hiccups. Again, that's where Synchrony comes in. These guys really know their stuff when it comes to credit products that are a lot like Apple's. Take for example, Apple Pay integration. They had Apple Pay integration way back in 2015. Synchrony was one of the first to let their private label credit card holders add their cards to Apple Pay. This move meant customers could keep all their perks like loyalty rewards, discounts at the register, and special financing deals all while using Apple Pay. It's really a big thumbs up for Synchrony's ability to blend new technology with credit cards. And Synchrony also has high yield savings accounts. Their accounts offer a 4.75% APY, which is a solid step up from Apple's account that offers just 4.15% APY. Synchrony also has pay later services, just like Apple introduced their pay later feature this year, Synchrony has been offering a similar service. It lets you make a purchase and spread the cost out over time, which is super handy for bigger buys. Synchrony also does pre-approvals and they allow you to get pre-approved for many of their credit cards without a hard credit pull, which is just like Apple. The only twist is that Apple also shows your starting credit limit during the pre-approval process. And you know, Synchrony has a bunch of cars that will pre-approve you without a hard credit pull. And if you haven't yet, definitely check out my free credit card pre-approval master list with over 60 credit cards that just do a soft credit pull for pre-approval. And some of them even show your starting limit up front. Just hit the link below to check that out. And Apple's new issuing bank should have strong tech capabilities to integrate with Apple systems and provide a seamless experience for Apple Car users. Capital One feels that role the best because it isn't just any bank, they're super tech savvy, especially in credit cards and digital banking. And here's what they've been working on, AI and machine learning. These guys are all in on AI. Take Eno, for example. It's the first chatbot in banking that you can text like a person to check your balance, track spending, and even spot potential fraud. And Capital One is like a tech company inside a bank. 
They use cloud tech to make banking smoother and have a huge team of over 12,000 software engineers. And they were way ahead in the digital game, even appointing a chief data officer way before other banks did. They're always experimenting with big data, which shows they're serious about staying ahead of digital banking. And listen, their mobile app is a good example of what their tech can do as well. It can use machine learning to fix problems inside the app, plus it wraps all their banking services into one app. The fact that they're using all their high-tech stuff makes them a commercial bank that almost doubles as a fintech company. And when it comes to customer service, Apple really needs a bank that knows its stuff. They need someone who can handle questions and problems like a pro. Now, if we're talking about the customer service champs, Amex is pretty much the gold standard. Seriously, ask around in the credit card world and you'll hear Amex's name pop up a lot with maybe Discover as a close second. People really appreciate how Amex treats them. And Amex is absolutely crushing it in the customer satisfaction game. They've snagged the top spot as the number one US credit card company for customer satisfaction by JD Power for the fourth year straight. That's 13 times since the survey started. And they're leading the charge in five big areas. That's benefit rewards, customer service, credit card terms, and account management. So what bank should win the Apple Card portfolio? Now we're at a bit of a standstill right now. It's a three-way tie between Chase, Capital One, and Synchrony Bank for Apple's business. Breaking this tie really boils down to what Apple values the most. If Apple is all about managing risk, then Capital One could be their best bet. But if they're looking for a bit of flexibility in a bank that offers similar products, Synchrony might just edge them out. However, if Apple's putting a premium on financial stability and a solid reputation, then Chase is the obvious front runner. But you know, based on Apple's track record, they don't seem to put too much stock in reputation. I mean, they teamed up with Goldman Sachs for their Apple car, right? And Goldman Sachs was pretty much a newbie in the consumer banking game at that time. Also, Apple's not shy about taking risk. Remember how they pushed Goldman Sachs into taking a bunch of subprime borrowers? Both Capital One and Synchrony are pretty open to working with folks who have lower credit scores. So that's kind of a toss up here. Personally, I think Apple's really looking for a partner who is flexible and lets them stay in control. They're notorious for setting strict standards with their suppliers, often requiring them to make quick adjustments to meet Apple's ever-changing demands. Whether it's tweaking their product designs or shaking up their production process, suppliers have to stay on their toes to keep up with Apple. So I think it's really Synchrony Bank that comes out on top. They've got tons of experience working with big companies and they're way smaller compared to Goldman Sachs, which means Apple could have a much bigger say during negotiations. And Dominique Gabriel, an analyst from Oppenheimer and Company, mentioned that Synchrony Financial would love Apple's car since it fits with their objectives and because Synchrony is looking for technology-driven card partners. Synchrony actually threw their hat in the ring for the initial launch of the Apple car, but lost out to Goldman Sachs. They probably jump at the chance to team up with Apple now. But one thing's for sure, Goldman Sachs regrets teaming up with Apple and taking on the Apple car. They don't want anything to do with it now. They've lost close to $3 billion already, and most Goldman Sachs execs say it was a distraction. But the thing is, Apple doesn't really care. So check out the next video to find out seven reasons why Apple will be just fine, even though the Apple car and savings account is losing billions. Thank you for watching.